Wait a minute, wait a minute. I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Um, got it. Okay, you can see it all okay? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Looks good. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This morning is give us today our daily bread. None of us lives and none of us dies for ourselves alone. Living or dying belongs to the Lord. Uh, Jan, would you read the gospel reflection this morning? Jim Brindle? Yes. Jesus, you are the bread of life. Those who come to you will never be hungry. Those who believe in you will never thirst. You are the living bread from heaven. The bread you give us is your own flesh and you give it for the life of the world. All who eat your flesh and drink your blood live in you and you in them. For the flesh is the food we need. Your blood is our salvation. All who eat your flesh and drink your blood have eternal life. Look to Jesus in the wilderness, breaking bread and feeding the multitude. Uh, Harrison, would you read the epistle reflection? Yes, I will. Okay. Sparse sowing, meager reaping. But if we are generous, bountiful will be the harvest. So let us give what we can, not with regret nor from a sense of duty. God loves a cheerful giver. And when we help others, we will not just meet their needs. We will unleash a flood of gratitude to God. Many will give glory to God for our loyalty to the gospel and for our generosity. God loves a cheerful giver. Our reading this morning is uh, the beginning of the uh, apocalyptic uh, work of Matthew. Um, and I'm going to read this and think about how this affected the people uh, of the time, uh, reading this in first century uh, uh, Israel. As Jesus came out of the temple and was going away, his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. Then he asked them, you see all these, do you not? Truly I tell you, not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when this will be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age. Jesus answered them, beware that no one leads you astray for many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah and they will lead them many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. Then they will hand you over to be tortured and will put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of my name. Then many will fall away and they will betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because of the increase in lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. <laughs> wow. So how are y'all feeling after that? Not, not real good. No. <laughs> it's frightening. Uh, listening as someone who doesn't know anything about, you know, 2,000 years of history of the end not having come yet, but at the, in those days, what? And I don't know my Old Testament scriptures well enough to know what they would have, what references there are here that they would have been familiar with. Um, 
that they could anchor this to? That's a good question. It sounds a lot like the echoes of, of the prophets warning of the coming day of the Lord, which will be a day of judgment and retribution and um, you know, terrible uh, recompense, to, especially to evildoers, setting of the record straight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, uh, keep in mind, this is uh, interesting because the first three verses here, uh, Matthew is, um, uh, this has already happened at the time Matthew is writing his gospel. Uh, the uh, Jewish uprising uh, occurred and uh, Jerusalem was uh, sacked by the Romans. Uh, people were dispersed. So the, this is all, that part about the buildings of the temple, they've already been torn down when people are hearing this message. And uh, so you're, na you're talking about a group of people who've uh, seen this happen, they've been dispersed, and, uh, so, and then uh, we're hearing these words from Jesus. Um, what do you think? <laughs> There's a lot of being led astray in this this text, isn't there? Yeah, a lot of bad stuff happening. Sounds repetitive to me. Just in a short area time that I've been on this earth, we've had some awful wars. Mm -hmm. some, mm -hmm. some very difficult times when people drop nuclear bombs and wipe out whole communities. I mean, what does that foretell? Sounds like I'm in countdown mode. Yeah, well, it, it kind of describes, uh, you know, many, many eras since, since this was even written, you know, or proclaimed. It, it's like a, a, a definition of, of many different years and eras of nations rising against nation and mm -hmm. famine. Yeah, I mean, having taken year three of EFM, I think it's, it's been like this continually. You will be hated by all nations because of my name. How many, how many wars have been fought in his name? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you wonder if there really were many times when there weren't wars and rumors of wars, uh, nations rising against nations. Uh, it seems to almost have been a constant. Um, and certainly uh, famines and earthquakes, uh, these kind of things, have, um, you know, they go on all the time, don't they? Right. Um, and uh, so what might be the message there? One thing left the out is the, many will grow cold. That's what I was going to say. What was that? The, but, but the one the love who of endures, many will grow cold. Yeah, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. Wow. One thing I was left out is uh, is epidemics and plagues. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just to cheer things up a little. Well, that 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 gets worked into. Uh, if you if you want to read about them, then we read Revelation, right? Yeah. The ultimate in the apocalyptic literature, um, uh, which gets into uh, ah, gee, all kinds of exciting plagues that you could add. To <clears throat> uh, some of the uh, uh, roots of uh, the apocalyptic uh, literature. Uh, uh, are mainly in the book of Daniel in the Old Testament. Um, and they talk about um, one of the uh, verse, uh, Daniel 9, 27, talks about uh, the non-fulfillment of prophecies uh, served to popularize uh, apocalyptic literature. Uh, people were... Um, uh, wondering why, you know, the, all these prophecies are made uh, by the by the prophets in in history, and yet they weren't being fulfilled. So when was that going to happen? 
when were those prophecies going to be fulfilled? And um, uh, so that's the continuation here of just, you know, when, when does the end come? Um, so what, do you, what do you think there? I'd like to know what the end is. Mm. <laughs> what does that mean when it all ends? Is that a good thing or a bad thing or a mm. big explosion or do we just move into the kingdom? Oh, then you have to wait for chapter 25 <laughs> for the yes. reveal of what happens then. Mm -hmm. Sheep and goats time. Sheep and goats time, yeah. Well, you know, if you, if you look at all of this and kind of take it into nowadays, it, it really is kind of scary. You know, many false prophets and the love of many will grow cold. Yeah. Yeah. Famines uh, and, and, and nations against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms, famines and earthquakes and, and unusual places. Yeah. And, and I think that's, we've, we've been talking about wars having been, you know, all the time. I think all of these, right. they just seem to, I'm not even going to say go in cycles. They just seem to move around. They seem to be always somewhere. And so, yeah, also today. And well, and think about today in terms of information. We know about it immediately. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have known this stuff. They would have, would, would have been story about this happened here, this happened there. There would, there would have been maybe a little bit of time to adjust a little bit before they heard about the next one. But now it's instant and it's multiple. It's in, you know, within a day you can hear things that are pretty scary. All day long you can hear about things that are scary. We're not always sure it's the truth. Right. It's still scary, it doesn't mean. <laughs> and that's maybe that's also how the good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world. Just like that. That's hmm. the way to look at it. Huh. I'd like to have someone read it again, and, th and then we can focus on just what is this saying to us today. Uh, Robert, would you mind reading it? Happy to. As Jesus came out of the temple and was going away, his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. Then he asked them, you see all these, do you not? Truly, I tell you, not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will this be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered them, beware that no one leads you astray for many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars and see that you are not alarmed for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. Then they will hand you over to be tortured and will put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. Then many will fall away, and they will betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all the nations. And then the end will come. What I don't see is happening. There's wars and rumors of wars and, and so forth. But he says, I, many will come saying, I am the Messiah. And they will lead many astray. To, to my remembrance, I, we don't hear people saying, I'm the Messiah. 
Jim Jones. Yeah, they're, they're, I was thinking of those small ones. Iowa but, can fix it. <laughs> yeah, I wonder uh, maybe uh, uh, instead of saying the word Messiah, they're acting like a Messiah and uh, promising things that people find attractive for whatever reason. So they're, they're offering um, um, uh, guidance and, and a system that people are falling into. Um, they're offering solutions. Mm -hmm. But it, this ends so hopefully. The, the good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world. Yeah, I'm very hopeful. Mm -hmm. And I think it's hopeful too. Just now looking at this, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Now it doesn't make sense to me why we have to have wars, but at least I find this past that one little phrase hopeful, especially mm -hmm. combined with the, with the hope at the end of the passage. I was, listening to, one of, I was listening to one of the astronauts who just recently went up into space from the United States and he was saying from the perspective of space looking at the earth and seeing no boundaries at all just this beautiful planet um, mm. you know maybe 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 that will happen maybe we will all have this new perspective of being part of one beautiful planet wouldn't that be beautiful that would be I was struck by the phrase in the second paragraph, the beginning of birth pangs, <laughs> after they'd had uh, famines and earthquakes in various places, the beginning of birth pangs. Wow. <laughs> they we're just going into labor. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So the end is a new birth, perhaps. Right. Right. And painful. I mean, think about how how uh, how difficult it is to give birth, and how painful it is to give birth, and how we are stretched. And so individual. Every everyone is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that focus on uh, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. If each of us endures, then as a global community we can all be saved and the good news of the kingdom will come. Not just one person, but the one. Yeah, yeah. but, but if, everybody, if, every, if, if everyone, right, but the one, right, so if I do my part, Connie, you do your part, everybody does their part as a global community, the, you know, we will endure. And um, despite all of the, all the um, shenanigans on the front end of the thing, right? If we keep our eyes focused on God as individuals and, and do his, his work, then um, we all can have the promise of, of, a, of his kingdom. That the, kind the of calls for a collective faith, which is rather difficult even in this pandemic get, to get people to believe that to save a life you wear a mask, <laughs> that shouldn't be so hard. Mm. It does sort of seem to me like um, Jesus is setting us up for this perpetual battle of good and evil. You know, he's sort of saying war is always going to be here. The you know, things to come. Um, but at the same time, he's telling everybody, keep loving and keep loving. And there's this movement of love spreading around the world. And I think he's, to me, it sort of just feels like, a, like an infinite loop so to speak. <laughs> He's just sort of setting us up for, there's always going to be war, there's always going to be pain, you got to endure, you know, and everything's going to turn out all right, but don't believe in all the prophets along the way that are telling you this is the end of time, you better, you better buy stock in what I'm selling now, because the end of time is coming. Yeah, it becomes very important to focus on identifying who the false prophets are and who the real uh, prophet is uh, the end coming is the second coming of Christ, um, and uh, this this endurance and hearing the good news of the world. Uh, I remember as a as a child in the Baptist church, uh, 
You know, it was presented that uh, once the word is spread to the entire world, that was going to be the signal that uh, uh, Jesus would come again. And uh, so um, uh, we were supposed to uh, root for um, uh, spreading the word throughout the world. Uh, and then, uh, you know. Um, but it was the word as they heard it. Well, yeah. 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 Paul, is that, Paul, is that the link to, and is that the link of the second coming? Is that the link to then the end will come? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah the uh, the word parousia uh, is uh, the presence, the arrival, uh, the second coming of Christ, and uh, we we see how this uh, plays out more fully in Matthew's gospel in the next uh, two chapters. Uh, um, I guess we, we, I think it, we will have this reading next week from the famous Matthew 25, which is often quoted, uh, and that's the uh, separating of the sheep and the goats. And uh, they're they're going to ask, well, how do you how do you decide who the sheep, who are the sheep and who are the goats? And that is looking at um, well, the teaser is. Uh, uh, for I was hungry and you gave me food uh, and several other things. So living out uh, the love of Christ and the, and the best of the prophets uh, will turn out to be the, 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 how the uh, separating of sheep and goats occurs. So we'll, we'll get to that next week. <laughs> In the meantime, we have to endure. Just till next week. Just till next That's week. That's exciting, really interesting. Exciting conclusion. <laughs> that's that's interesting, um, and and piggybacking on that, and also Harrison and also Susan's, the thought of maybe the um, mask wearing and so forth, the individual uh, person versus the community, you know, focusing on the community as a whole. Um, and the collective good of, of all versus individual for each person. Mm -hmm. That's, that may be part of, you know, what he's saying. Okay. Any other thoughts? I think we need to, to move on now. <clears throat> Our Father, give us today our daily bread. Are there any petitions or thanksgivings? For Carol, Connie, Mark, and Sid. For Ed, Kathy, Betsy, Dee, Sally. For the Appalachia Food Bank. For all I'm the so hospital great. workers who are um, working in hospitals that are reaching capacity. We're so grateful for, for this community. God of seed and growth and harvest, creator of need, creator of satisfaction, give us, we pray, our daily bread, sufficient and assured for all. Give us also, we pray, the bread of life, and we shall have a care to feed the hungry and to seek for peace and justice in the world. Help us then to remember and to know that you are our life today and every day. You are the food we need now and forever. God, give us work till our life shall end and life till our work is done. Look kindly on our world, our God, as we suffer and struggle with one another. Look kindly on your church, driven by the same necessity. And may the light we have seen in Jesus illuminate and brighten all the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Thank I love...